The NBA's development of young players wait for absolutely nobody. The perfect example, the terrible, awful, horrendous, record-breaking 28-game losing streak Pistons, collecting all the lottery picks possible, including a number one pick, traded for several number two picks, both hot garbage, arguably drafted the worst lottery guy of this generation, given their regretful mistakes, absolutely still rebuilding half a decade later. A combination of a bad front office, lack of player development, combined with too many other young guys all playing for themselves, trying to stay in the league, others left wandering on the bench praying for minutes, the 2019 draft class already approaching 5 full years. Many questions left to be answered. A few of the potential faces of the league already caused too much harm to their name, not getting the love for basketball reasons. Many stars to come to the league after 2019, now more focused by the mainstream, surpassing the likes of Ja and Zion, but not only those two, what the heck actually happened to 2020 all-rookie team? Starting with Kendrick Nunn, no rookie has had a quicker downfall in recent times, rising to relevancy as fast as his decline from the association, now 28 years old playing in Athens, Greece, one of Simeon's high school legends, just one of five players to have their jersey number retired alongside former superstar teammate Jabari Parker, just a four-star recruit, has some off-court troubles, dismissed from Illinois, dominated with Oakland, finished second in the NCAA scoring 2018, only behind Trey Young, undrafted as a 22 year old, spent time in the G League before Miami had their eyes on him, dominated preseason, shocked the world by scoring the most points ever for an undrafted rookie their first 5 games, talked about like a future all-star, teams began kicking themselves for not drafting none, Miami quickly utilized his strengths as a scorer, first undrafted player since 2007 to make all rookie first team, quickly rolls up the debates on rookie of the year considerations, a serious threat to John Moran, started all 67 games, averaged an impressive 15.3 points for a true contender, first undrafted rookie to win several rookie of the month awards, came in second place for rookie of the year, given his brilliance, undrafted players like Nunn didn't have a multiple year contract and can easily be let go if their productions no longer matter. Having COVID draw the bubble and leaving due to a family matter, go on Dragic then bowled out, being an established vet, Miami made an improbable finals run with none riding the bench, even DMP's last three conference finals games worse Boston, only for Dragic to suffer a painful foot injury, game one of the finals, forcing none to have big minutes, not quite warmed up for the biggest stage, did ball out game 5, put up similar numbers his second season, swept out a round 1, Miami shockingly resented Nunn's qualifying offer, many shocked when agreeing to just 2 years 10 million, selling himself short, accused of ring chasing at the young age of 25, supposed to carry the offense off the bench as a score for LeBron in AD, but a devastating bone bruise injury kept him out the whole season, frustrated the Lakers as a whole, minutes decrease, LA already had too many guards, after 39 unproductive games for 23 season, shifted to DC for Rui Hachimura, an absolute steal for the Lake Show, struggled making any impact with Washington just 31 games later before being out the league, a score first undersized 2 guard at 6-2, not adding anything other than scoring, the Heat anticipated the rise of younger Tyler Hero, smartly did not want to pay the limited none, not proving himself as a 15-20 to 20 point scorer on the Wizards was the final nail in the car for being out the league, one of many undersized guards after suffering a big injury, leading to loss of athleticism, being a defensive liability, the type of player that ages out the NBA faster than milk. Eric Pascoe made shocking headlines in the video showing his massive weight gain, the now 27 year old, 2 years removed from the NBA, seemed like his days trying to land another roster spot, long over, the scary reality for many athletes, putting those pounds just as fast as putting up Will Chamberlain numbers. Last played in Puerto Rico, released April 10th, didn't seem like he touched the basketball in almost a year, 11 months of not being on a professional team, from rotational player on Golden State, given every green light with the heavy injuries to the stars, one of the worst teams all season 2020, pretty much empty stats of 14 points, 4.5 rebounds, 28 minutes played, built solid at 6'7", could handle well for a power forward, but unable to hit threes, similar to the likes of a Michael Carter Williams on a bad team, 
Haskell way too limited as a player, with Curry back healthy 2021, his numbers reduced in a limited role, the playstyle never truly fit with Kerr's offense, replaceable with Iggy, Otto Porter Jr. and Bielisa taking his spot, also way too small to play small ball 5 if he were 2 inches taller, would still probably be in the NBA as a backup center. But his best skill being an ISO scorer doesn't match with Kerr's team's philosophy or most teams in reality. Especially having the younger, more mobile Jonathan Kuminga being on a slump that second year when team needed him to step up, the ugly looking jump shot became his kryptonite, didn't fix his flaws by the time the team was putting everything together for a serious run, Golden State eventually traded him after two seasons to Utah, reuniting with his childhood buddy Donovan Mitchell, Dubs ended up winning the title, Pascal deep on the bench, barely cracking Jazz rotation, out the league after three NBA seasons, thought about giving up ball altogether before a two-way deal with Minnesota but waived the start of 23 season, unfortunately stuck in an NBA center's body without the height to match up with average fives, too slow and limited to play the four. Former second team all rookie Terrence Davis of Toronto, truly one of the most forgotten former players, now age 26, put up 7.5 points for a number 2 seed in the East, 17 minutes off the bench, shot the 3 at 39%, good athlete for his size but only 6'4 for a shooting guard, year 2 traded to Sacramento, his advanced numbers look good but the lack of defense and poor decision making holding him back, kind of like a poor man's buddy heel, not as good on the 3 ball, not the type of player to play for long stretches, Malik Monk proven to be much better and can score create, leaving limited room for Davis's growth. Last season, his minutes reduced even more, team excelled more with him on the bench. Instead of being viewed as a young combo guard with upside, Davis considered a 9th or 10th man on a good team who won't crack a playoff rotation but will play upwards of 20 minutes a game when the starters have injuries, not signing any contract, picked up by Portland's G League squad, unfortunately suffered a season ending ruptured Achilles January 4th won't be back to playing ball until fall the absolute worst nightmare of an injury now consider an afterthought teams that want to pursue him most likely won't offer anything more than event minimum the league already knows him as a weak ball handler having defensive lapses and being super serviceable he can either play two more years in the NBA or even five years but also not surprising if Terrence Davis ends up overseas the rest of his career now looking like the player forever known making all rookie team over RJ Barrett. Brandon Clark of the Memphis Grizzlies, a devastating tore Achilles, kept him out for over a year and a half, suffered March of last year, excellent energy backup power forward a rim runner, the now 27 year old drafted 21st, made his debut age 23, one of the guys with excellent chemistry with Ja, that's why the Grizz could afford getting rid of Xavier Tillman and Steven Adams. Clark can get even better if the outside shot improves given the athleticism might take a dip after the injury, under contract till 2027, after signing 4 years 50, a lost season for the franchise, Memphis still a serious dread when everybody's healthy come next season. Ja Moran, having shoulder surgery, expected to be fully recovered by next season after a 25 game suspension, the last 12 months of the Grizz and Moran's career has been an ongoing absolute travesty. Literally everything that could have went wrong with Memphis absolutely went wrong. From cracking the fringes of a top 10 player caliber, many won't even have job ja top 25 now. At least establishing himself the best player in his class, the 24 year old needs to get out of his troubling ways and continue staying low key off the court, but great sign, the work ethic speaks for itself after a ridiculous game winner first game back, least many of us wanting more. Should get back to his former self come next season, reminding many who's already forgotten about the Memphis Grizzlies. Zion Williamson, low key having a solid year, his ceiling no longer sky high, nobody thinks he'll ever reach top 5 player in the game status given the extensive injuries and lack of durability, but officially playing the second most games of his career in any season, health wise solid the last 4 months. On a team aiming to secure a playoff spot, the hype train all of a sudden stopped after getting ridiculed for his way plus off-court personal life drama, every time Zion has a great game, mainstream media complete silence. His biggest strength, being deadly efficient at the rim, giving teams 25-5-5 and a night, wasn't even selected as an all-star this season. Now viewed as a good player instead of superstar quality, can still have a Hall of Fame potential career if he does the right things. Looks athletically worse than the 2021 season, 
improved as a passer, but nothing too major for other upgrades. Given his history of poor work ethic, 5 full seasons in, only 2 all-star appearances to show, no awards won, still only age 23, but the lack of maturity to take his game to another level, not having the best attitude, Zion only seems to respond well when getting called out heavily. Mr. Williamson needs to play with that same motivated energy every night if he wants to be in the superstar conversation. Other All-NBA second teamers, Tyler Hero, Kobe White, PJ Washington, Rui Hachimura, very useful player hero, being one of the most controversial given his injuries, Miami making a finals run without him, super polarizing, being one of the best shooters but doesn't provide any rim pressure, barely gets to the line, needs to shoot lights out to have a serious impact, 24 years old, getting that big back till 2027, 30 mil a season-ish, a little overpaid according to most, might make one or two all-star appearances, but that's pretty much his ceiling. Kobe White of the Chicago Bulls, finally getting his drives, making the case for most improved player. PJ and Rui likely never reach all-star levels, but 11 to 16 point game scores on good teams as reserves, both inconsistent, but can go off for 30 plus on any random night. Any of these former players now out the league getting a second chance anytime soon? Most likely not. Share your thoughts below. Tons of basketball left for 2024. See y'all next video.